Today, you're gonna to learn four of the best ways to sharpen images in Photoshop to make those details come to life. Now, I'm gonna be working with a lot of landscape and macro type photos today, but all of these steps that we talk about in this tutorial will apply to any type of image that you're working with, including portraits and product photos as well. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how it all works. Hello, friend, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com, and we're gonna start off with the most simple methods of sharpening images and then work our way to my favorite options for sharpening at the end of this tutorial. So the first option that we'll talk about is one of the most basic and probably what you'll be most familiar with, which is the sharpening sliders within Camera Raw. Now these are a little bit different than the ones that are inside of Lightroom, and they offer a more, I guess, beginner friendly way of sharpening your photos in Photoshop because there's just some sliders and there's a lot less settings going on. However, you can still get a really good result from it. So for this example, we're going to sharpen this landscape image I took the other weekend on a little hike I went on, and once your image is open opened into Photoshop, we need to first convert it into a smart object. However, if you're opening a raw photo into Photoshop, Camera Raw will automatically open for you and you don't have to do the step I'm about to mention here. However, if your photo looks like mine, it's just open in the main Photoshop workspace, we need to first convert it to a smart object by right clicking on the layer, then going to convert to smart object. Now with your layer converted, we'll go up to filter and down here to Camera Raw filter. That will open the Camera Raw workspace and all of your sharpening adjustments can be found here in the detail panel. Now, any sharpening adjustment that you do is essentially adding edge contrast to your photo. So it's increasing the highlights and the shadows to make a specific edge pop in the image. So with that in mind, as you increase the sharpening amount, you're essentially increasing the edge contrast of all of the details in your photo. Now it's kind of hard to tell what things are being sharpened when you're zoomed out like this. So we're gonna zoom all the way in and take a much better look at exactly what's going on. Now I like to zoom in quite a lot to see what's going on here. And let's move the sharpening adjustment all the way back down to zero. Now, as you can see, things kind of look a little bit soft. Now, if you move that slider all the way to 100 or 150 points in this case, you can see that there's a lot of like little details that start to make the photo look really bad because at a certain point, it's gonna not only increase the edge contrast in your photo, but it's also going to start sharpening some of the noise and things like that as well, which gives you these weird textures all around your image. So across all of the sharpening effects that we'll talk about in this tutorial, you don't wanna go overboard with any of them because this same issue will happen. So instead what you should do is go to the sharpening slider and just bump this up a little bit until you start to see some detail enhancements across the whole image like this. Now, if you look at the water, there is quite a bit of grain and things that we don't want to see anymore. So that's where the noise reduction comes into play. Now the noise reduction and the color noise reduction are two slightly different things. The noise reduction slider will smooth out any luminance noise, which is essentially the basic grain that you see in a photo. Whereas the color noise reduction will smooth out any of the colored pixels created in noise is often happens in more low light photos rather than midday like this. But I'll put up an example on the screen to show you the two types of grain side by side. For this particular photo, I don't really have much color noise because I don't see any of those colored pixels around. So therefore, I'm just gonna use my noise reduction slider, which is the luminance noise. And I'll just drag this up until most of that noise is gone. Now you have to be sparing with these types of adjustments because that will also smooth out a lot of details in the photo. So if I look at the tree branches, for example, if I have this all the way down, the tree branches look nice and sharp, but if I increase this noise reduction all the way, it starts to kind of look like a painting almost because all of those details have kind of just been smoothed over and they just blend together, kind of like a brush stroke on a painting would. So, just like with the sharpening, you need to be sparing with it. You don't wanna go overboard and you just need to work your way up until some of that noise is reduced without sacrificing the edge quality or the edge contrast. So I'm gonna just work this up a little bit until the noise in that water looks pretty much smoothed out. And then I might just bump up the sharpening a little bit as well so that the details come back into play. Now, if I turn this adjustment on and off by clicking on the eyeball icon, you can see how our original photo was a little bit more, I guess, blurry looking versus our sharpened image, the details are a lot more enhanced. Now, when you go and zoom out back to 100% here, all of the sharpening adjustments just help to boost the overall clarity in the photo and make all those details pop a little bit more. So now when your sharpening adjustments are done, to exit Camera Raw, just click OK. And since we had our image layer converted to a smart object, we now have the Camera Raw adjustment as a smart filter 
below the image layer. So that means we can double click on this filter to re-access camera raw and adjust our sharpening adjustments as needed. So zooming in just a little bit here and turning that on and off, you can see how we have basically done a nice job to subtly sharpen the photo, enhance those details, and we only had to use a couple of sliders. So this is a really easy option in Photoshop that's very similar to Lightroom, but it might be a little bit less overwhelming because there are fewer sliders. Now, one quick thing before we move on to the next sharpening adjustment, in some cases, it can be difficult to see how your sharpening is being applied. So when you're within the camera raw filter here, when you go onto your sharpening adjustment, if you just hold alter option and click on that sharpening slider, your photo will go to black and white. And now when you zoom in here, when your photo's in black and white, it's a lot easier to see how the sharpening is being applied. As you can see, if I bring this down to zero and as this goes up, the sharpening becomes very obvious because there's less colors to be distracted by. Instead, you're only seeing the black and white luminance values essentially of your entire photo, making it a lot easier to find the perfect sharpening for your image. So that's just a fun little ninja tip to think about when you're using this method. Now, the next method that we're gonna talk about is Smart Sharpen, which is a filter within Photoshop that does a really good job to allow you to control more settings of your sharpening adjustments. I find that this works really good for small details such as in this photo, and there's some cool settings that aren't available anywhere else. Now, before you go and use this filter, you need to first convert your layer to a smart object so that you're editing non-destructively. So right click on your image layer and go to convert to smart object. Now go up to filter, sharpen, and smart sharpen. Now in the window that appears, you can change the size of it to basically change this preview window, and then you can click anywhere on your image to adjust where the preview is located. Now for your adjustments, I really recommend zooming way in on your image. I like to do this on both my image and the preview window here. So then that way I kind of have two things to compare side by side. So I'm gonna go right near the edges here because that's where the most sharpening effects will be visible. Now from here, we have a very similar set of settings as we did previously, but the first thing you want to consider is the remove option. Now, I would recommend setting this to lens blur or Gaussian blur most of the time. However, if you have like a little bit of camera shake, you could set this to motion blur and then set the angle that the camera shake is at. And this can help to mitigate it a little bit within reason, but don't expect it to absolutely totally change your photo. Anyways, for this photo, I'm gonna set this to lens blur. And now we're going to deal with the amount slider. And the amount is going to essentially be like the sharpening slider from camera raw. It's going to change how much edge contrast is visible in the photo. Now, if I go all the way down to zero, you can see how things are quite soft in the image. I'll zoom in more in this preview window just so you can see better here. Now, as I increase the amount, notice how the edges become more and more defined, and that's because there is more edge contrast in the photo, aka sharpness. Now, just like before, you don't wanna go overboard with this, so I'm gonna set it to let's say just over a hundred here, somewhere around this area. Next, we'll go to our radius slider and the radius amount will choose how much the sharpening spreads from the edge of your photo. So the higher the radius, the more that edge contrast will expand from the edges. To see this really obviously, I'll put this to 100 and you can see how there's all this like black that appears around the edge. That's because it's the edge contrast expanding out by in this case, 64 pixels from our edge. So of course we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna bring this all the way back down to zero and then just move this up a little bit until we just get a little hint of sharpness around the edges, but we're not getting any haloing. Like this would be considered haloing and over sharpening. So we want to avoid this like black shadow looking stuff. Instead, we wanna just find that happy medium where it's as sharp as possible without any of those over sharpening looks. Now, finally, the reduce noise slider will essentially smooth out all of this excess noise that's in the background there, but it will also smooth out some details in your photo, just like the noise reduction sliders in Camera Raw. So that's why I like to start at zero pixels and then just move my way up slowly until I find a happy medium between where the noise is reduced, but the edges are still looking sharp. In this case, right around 30% looks pretty good to me there. Now, finally, we have the shadows and highlight settings, and this allows you to dictate how the edge contrast is being applied to the highlights and the shadows. So the fade amount of both the highlights and the shadows will soften how the sharpening effect looks in either of those tonal ranges. Now, the tonal width will affect how much is included within the shadow range or the highlight range, while the radius will just affect how much sharpening is going to be applied outside 
outside of that specific shadow or highlight range. Now you can play around with these as you'd like, and it's going to depend on your photo for how this actually works. In my case, there's a very defined highlight here. So you can see that if I increase the fade amount, it gives a little bit of a different result, sort of blurring out and softening the sharpening around the edges of this highlight. Likewise, if I increase the tonal width here, that's going to make those highlight sharpening amounts a little bit more blurred and soft. So I like to keep this somewhere in the middle and the radius I like to keep relatively close to the middle as well, like so. So when in doubt, you can just keep things pretty much around 50% for everything and you'll be good to go. Now, once you've made these sharpening adjustments and you think that you're gonna use the exact same settings more than once, you could save a custom preset by clicking on this preset option, going to save preset. And then that way you can just click on this preset option and choose your defined preset later on. And it just saves you a bit of time down the road if needed. In this case, I'm not gonna do that. So I'll just click okay. Now that filter will be applied as a smart filter below your smart object. So that means you can double click on the smart sharpen option here and that will reopen that dialog box. So you can edit your sharpening adjustments later on if needed. However, we can also use this to preview our before and after. So turning that on and off, you can see how it's added a lot more edge contrast along the outside of the flower petals here. It's added a little bit more life to this in focus area in the center of the flower. And it just does a nice subtle job at sharpening the image. So the unique thing about this sharpening option is those shadow and highlight tonal range options. You're not gonna find that in any other sharpening adjustment. So I think that's something that's really cool and worth trying out if you're trying to sharpen your photo and you're not happy with the other results that you've been getting. Those settings can really help you out. So now let's get into the next two options, which are actually my favorite and my most go-to settings for sharpening images in photo. Now, before we get on to the next sharpening adjustment, if you're learning something new about sharpening, make sure to hit that like button down below to let me know. We're going to first talk about the unsharp mask, and then we're going to talk about high pass filters. So let's start here with the unsharp mask. Once again, we're going to want to convert our image into a smart object by right clicking on it and going to convert to smart object. In this case, mine's already converted, so I'm going to leave it as is. Now to apply an unsharp mask, we'll go up to filter down here to sharpen and then unsharp mask. Now, despite the name saying unsharp, this actually does a really good job at making your images sharp. So just ignore the name and bear with me here because it does a really good job at defining edge contrast and making little details pop in the photo, such as in this flower. So just like before, the amount slider is essentially the amount of edge contrast in your photo. Think of it like the sharpening slider. The radius slider will affect how much that edge contrast expands from any defined edge in your photo. And then finally, in this case, the threshold slider will kind of act as like a denoiser, helping to smooth out any excess noise or rough details in the image. So for this tool, I like to once again, zoom way in so I can get a nice view of all the details in my image. I like to go all the way to zero for the amount and then just work my way up here to see how it affects my photo. Now, the reason I really like this sharpening filter in particular is because look how much I have sharpened the image here in the center. I'll just go back to zero and then all the way back up here. You can add so much sharpening adjustments with this tool and it doesn't make any of the edges in your photo look weird or over sharpened. So that's why I really like the unsharp mask. Once you're happy with the amount setting, we can go to the radius and typically you don't want to expand this too much. Otherwise you're gonna get that haloing like this. So I like to go all the way to 0.1, which is the base setting and then work my way up. And I usually find myself sitting around about one to 1.5 pixels. Finally, I'll go to the threshold. And again, I don't like to increase this too much because it will soften out a lot of the image and basically reverse the sharpening adjustments that we made. So I'm going to keep this relatively low, let's say around six for this image. Click OK. And now that unsharp mask is applied as a smart filter below our layer. And we can turn that on and off to see the pretty noticeable difference there, adding a ton of nice sharpening to the center of the flower here and has added a bunch of nice sharpness around the edges of the flower without actually overdoing it and giving it any weird haloing looks. So you can start to see why this is one of my favorite ways of sharpening images in Photoshop. However, this next method, the high pass filter is even better in my opinion. For the high pass filter, we do things a little bit differently. We don't need to convert our image to a smart object and instead we need to duplicate our layer. So with your image layer selected, press Command or Control J to create a copy of it. We'll then call this layer to high pass. With that high pass layer selected, we'll then convert this one to a smart object by right clicking and going to convert to smart object. Once that's converted, we'll go up to filter, 
down here to other and then high pass. At first, your photo is gonna go completely gray like this and that's exactly what's supposed to happen, so don't worry. But I would suggest that you zoom in just a little bit so that you can actually see what's going on here because you want to have the slightest amount of details visible in your photo without overdoing it. So if I have this set to zero, you obviously can't see anything in the photo. However, as I increase this, the edges start to become more and more visible. And that's essentially what the high pass filter is doing is it's detecting the edges in your image and adding this contrast to them, which is essentially acting as sharpness. If you overdo this, like so, you're gonna end up with like a over sharpened effect with lots of haloing and it's gonna look pretty weird. So instead you wanna have a very slight radius set for your high pass filter so that all the details are just barely visible. That means I'm gonna go all the way down to zero and work my way up like so. And in this case, you can see how some of those details around the flower are just starting to become visible and that's exactly what I want. So in this case, my radius is 1.3. I'll click okay. Now, obviously we want this to be sharpening our photo and not have this gray look. So we can change the layer blending mode from normal and down here to linear light and that will get rid of the gray but keep that sharpening adjustment. So if I zoom in here just to get a better look, you might not notice anything unique going on right now. However, if I turn this on and off, Look how big of a difference that is in the sharpening amount. I'll zoom in one more time just to give you a closer look at exactly what's going on. As you can see, it's added a ton of nice sharpening to all these details in this particular flower without over sharpening things and it looks really awesome. In this case, it's applied that sharpening adjustment across the entire photo and we can reaccess it at any time to edit it by just double clicking on this high pass smart filter. Now with all the methods that we've talked about so far, all of them are applying sharpening to the entire photo at once. But if you only wanted part of your image to be sharpened at a time, you could either adjust the smart filter layer mask here, or in the case of the high pass filter, you could simply add a layer mask to the layer itself. Let me show you a quick example of both options here. In the case of the high pass filter, I'll click on the high pass layer, then go and add a layer mask like so. Now to make everything totally transparent so the sharpening adjustment is gone, I'm gonna press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. Therefore, everything on this layer is now transparent. Now that means I can grab my brush tool by pressing B on my keyboard, set my foreground color to white, and then if I zoom in, I can scale up my brush using a nice soft brush. I can go and paint in the areas that I want to be sharp. And then as you see, there's that little white area on the layer mask representing the areas that are being sharpened. So in this case, this part of the flower is being sharpened while the rest of the image is not being sharpened at all. Of course, you can continue to add your sharpening effects as needed by just painting with your brush. Now, when you're using smart filters, you can also just invert the smart filter layer mask by pressing Command or Control I. That will make all of your smart filters or the sharpening effects in this case completely transparent. From there you can once again grab your brush tool by pressing B, set your foreground color to white, and then you can go in and just manually paint on that mask to define exactly which areas you want to be sharpened without affecting the entire photo. Because in a lot of cases, there's no point in sharpening a blurred background because it's just gonna add noise to it. So instead, it's more worthwhile just to sharpen the details in your photo that are actually in focus. So those are the four ways to sharpen images in Photoshop. And if you wanna learn some of the recommended settings for a few of these different tools, I'll leave an article down below that I wrote over on my website, which has a few recommended settings for different types of images. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button down below and let me know which of these methods was your favorite sharpening adjustment. Anyways, my name is Brennan from bewellcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.